Hi friends, I'm Father Kerry Walters, pastor of Holy Spirit American National Catholic Church, and this is another Holy Spirit moment. I was in a coffee house the other day, and I heard a snippet of conversation which has stuck in my mind ever since. I don't know what the topic of conversation was about, but this is what I heard. One of the participants in the conversation said that she thought that these people, whoever they might be, didn't deserve a single ounce of mercy from the rest of us. That conversation, or that snippet of conversation, has remained with me because it got me to wondering exactly what we mean when we use the word mercy, particularly if we call ourselves Christians. You know, the 20th century philosopher Martin Heidegger is famous for saying that forgetfulness of the deep meaning of language impoverishes the way in which we look at and respond to reality. And I think the same thing could be said about our relationship with God. If we become forgetful of what words actually mean, we may, in point of fact, um, lessen the richness of a relationship with God. And I suspect that mercy is one of those words that we have forgotten. For most of us today, mercy is thought of as pity, uh, and we juxtapose it, don't we, to justice. We say that we are owed justice, but pity is a gift, an undeserved gift, that we bestow upon someone else. And what this tends to do is to make pity a kind of condescension on the part of the giver and a humiliation on the part of the receiver. That's one of the reasons why the 19th century philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche so despised pity. He called it an essential ingredient of the slave morality of Christianity because he thought it was manipulative. That's not what Christians think of as mercy, and it's certainly not what either the Hebrew or the Christian scriptures consider mercy to be. Non-Christian ancient Greeks were wary of pity for exactly the same reason that Nietzsche was. They tended to believe that it was a rhetorical manipulation, but had no role in rational or philosophical discussions. Now, I don't know if the Hebrew and Christian uh, authors of the Testaments ever exactly thought about pity as merely a rhetorical device, but for them, it is not the same as mercy. In either the Hebrew chesed, which we find in the Hebrew Testaments, or in the Greek elios, which we find in the New Testament, the Christian Testament, um, mercy is defined not so much as a sentimental or condescending feeling uh, of sympathy for another person's suffering, as it is a bestowal of the gift of well-being. Whenever we feel mercy for someone, what we try to do is to enact as best we can conditions that will be conducive to the maximization of their well-being. That certainly is what both Hebrew and Christian authors meant when they said that Hesed or Elios is one of the primary characteristics of the Lord God. God wishes the maximization of well-being of all of God's creation, but particularly that aspect of creation, human beings, which is made in God's own image. Now, think again about the relationship between mercy and justice with this particular understanding of what mercy is. We can see that mercy and justice are not at all incompatible with one another. We can see, as a matter of fact, that there's something about mercy which ought always to be included in any act of justice that human beings lay down. Justice isn't just about punishment. It's not just about retribution. It should also be about the maximization of well-being of the person who has offended another person. What we should always aim at in any system of justice is fairness and well-being not only for the victim, but also for the aggressor, and to keep the deep and rich and ancient meaning of mercy in mind is a reminder precisely of that. One of the most beautiful ways of expressing this relationship, this proper relationship between mercy and justice, is found in Act 4 of Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice. 
It's the speech that Portia, disguised as an, as an attorney, uh, delivers. It's very well known. If I may, let me read just part of it and refresh your memories. This is what Portia says. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It's twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. Tis mightiest in the mightiest. It becomes the throned monarch better than his crown. His scepter shows the force of temporal power, the attribute to awe and majesty, wherein doth sit the dread and fear of kings. But mercy is above this sceptered sway. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. It is an attribute to God himself. And earthly power doth then show likes to God's when mercy seasons justice. I love that last line in Portia's speech. All justice ought always to be seasoned with a dash of mercy. When we do that, we are likes to God. We as Christians are acting in a way that honors the God image in which we are made and which we carry through life. So my friends, Let's try to cultivate a little less, I wouldn't give that person a single ounce of mercy, and cultivate a little more seasoning of mercy in justice. I'm Father Kerry Walters, and this has been another Holy Spirit moment. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.